Hello YouTube, I hope everybody's day is going well, and welcome to my video on instrument flight planning. In the previous video, we learned how to plan a VFR flight plan, and if you haven't seen that, I would recommend going to check it out. It's a good video that will explain the basis of knowledge that you would need to plan a IFR flight. So the number one thing when planning an IFR flight is we need to have an IFR chart. So there are a couple good resources for this. I like to use Skyvector, and if you're international, I would recommend using Simbrief. So with that being said, we're going to be using Skyvector today. When you get to Skyvector, you'll be met with this screen here. Now this is a VFR chart, and we want an IFR chart. So if you come up to the top right-hand corner, you'll see an option for World Low. We'll go ahead and click on that. That will bring us to the IFR side of things. So there are a couple things that we'll need to know to, f to plan the IFR flight plan. We'll need to know how to identify airports, and we'll also need to know how to identify our obstacle clearance altitude. So number one is airports. So the, on an IFR flight plan, there are three different types of airports. And we can see those here. And you can identify airports by these big blotches of text that are colored blue, green, and brown. So the blue airports and the green airports both have instrument approaches. The brown airports do not. Sometimes brown airports will have visual approaches, which are good but they have to be flown visually. Blue and green airports, the major difference is blue airports have high approaches and green airports have low approaches. And we'll get into that more when we do videos on instrument approaches. But for now, if you're filing an IFR flight plan, I would recommend going to blue or green airports. So first things first, we need to find a departure airport and a destination airport. For us, that's going to be Jacksonville and Tallahassee. So once you find those, we'll come over here to the top left-hand corner and we'll click on flight plan and we'll type their four letter identifiers into the departure and destination tab. For us, that is KJAX and KTLH and we press enter, that will give us our direct route of flight. If we're flying in the clouds and we can't see anything, how do we know we're not gonna hit anything? So for that, we'll have to determine our minimum obstacle clearance altitude. And there are two types of these. There are obstacle clearance altitudes for off route and there are obstacle clearance altitudes for on route. Because we're going direct, we're going to be using the off-route obstacle clearance altitude, which basically means that we're flying direct and we're not flying on an airway. So to find this out, we'll come over here and we'll take our first leg. So this little bit here. And this first leg is within this lat long box. And you can find these, they're small, uh, thin, light blue lines that show numbers in the top left. And this for us here, it's 82 west and 31 north. Then once you find that box, you'll find this number, this light brown number that reads 27 for this case. And that means that if we fly at 2,700 feet, anywhere within this lat long box, we are guaranteed a thousand feet of obstacle clearance. So to find out what altitudes we have to be at, we'll find all the lat long boxes that we fly through and all the numbers that are in those boxes. So for us, we have two seven for our first box, one eight for our second, three four for our third, and three four for our fourth. Now to keep this simple, we'll just climb to three four right away, 3,400. And that'll, that'll make sure that along our entire route, 
we are keeping a thousand feet of obstacle clearance. Now the other way is using airways and this is the way that I prefer because when we fly in mountainous terrain this number in the lat long box can tend to get really high because if you think about it there could be a mountain over here that's at 6,000 feet which is going to raise this number up to 7,000 feet but if you're over here to the south you might be plenty far away from that mountain and it might not matter so you could be flying at 2,000 feet and you'd be perfectly fine so airways avoid that so for airways we can see two big numbers here if we're looking at Victor 198 we can see this number with an asterisk and then this number with no asterisk now the number with the asterisk that is the minimum en route obstacle clearance altitude for an airway so that means that if we're flying on this airway on this leg and we're flying at 2100 feet we are guaranteed a thousand feet of obstacle clearance now for the second number the minimum and root altitude which in this case is 3000 that means that if we're anywhere on this leg at a minimum of 3000 feet will be guaranteed obstacle clearance of at least a thousand feet and also reception to the VOR which we definitely want because we don't want to lose reception to our VOR and then not know where we are so that's the minimum en route altitude for obstacle clearance and for reception now for Tango Airways it's very similar for Tango Airways, we'll see two major numbers that we have to pay attention to, which are the exact same numbers, our minimum and route obstacle clearance altitude and our minimum and route altitude. And they work the exact same way. The 2,500 here is the lowest altitude that we can fly while still maintaining a thousand foot obstacle clearance. And the 3,000 feet is the lowest altitude that we can fly while still maintaining obstacle clearance and maintaining a steady reception. So let's say we want to use Victor 198 here. We first need to figure out which fix we want to enter Victor 198 on. And we have to find a fix that is on Victor 198, otherwise this wouldn't work. So we find Monia here. And that we know is on Victor 198 because Victor 198 goes straight through it. So we'll go over here into our en route box and we'll type in Monia, M O N I A. Then we'll press space and then we're going to select the airway that we want to fly on, which is Victor 198. Victor 198, space. And then we'll find the fix that we want to exit on. So for this, let's pick Lloyd, L-L-O-Y-D. And the same thing for Lloyd, we need to pick a fix that is on the airway to exit on. So you might be wondering, what's the difference between Victor Airways and Tango Airways? So Victor Airways use VORs, which are ground-based equipment, and Tango Airways use GPS, which is space-based equipment. So Victor Airways, you can find that they have a little bit of a higher minimum en route altitude than Tango Airways. A good example of this is right here. This Victor 267 airway is overlapping a GPS airway. That's why we see a black number and a blue number and we can see that the black number associated with the Victor Airway is higher than the blue number associated with the Tango Airway so if this number is still too high for you then you might ought to look for a Tango Airway with a lower number and instead of using VORs use GPS to navigate so keep in mind 
that when you come to the end of your flight, if you're still in the clouds, you might have to shoot an instrument approach. These take some time to learn, so I'll be creating another couple of videos on just those. And I also have just set up a Discord channel, so if you want, the link is in the description. It's also in the community tab of the YouTube. So go ahead and check that out if you want. Uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I sincerely appreciate all the comments and subscriptions that have come from you guys. And I hope to see more. As always, all questions are welcome in the comments. And I hope you all have a great day.